Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we have our weekly look at the numbers, trends, and latest news about COVID-19 with AMA's Chief Health and Science Officer, Dr. Mira Irons in Chicago. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer in Chicago. Uh, Dr. Irons, the big news this week is all about uh, the new guidance from CDC about mask use, and it's definitely created a bit of a stir and some confusion. Can you tell us uh, about the guidance, how it's been received? It certainly has. Um, so federal officials last announced last Thursday that Americans who are fully vaccinated against the coronavirus could stop wearing masks or maintaining social distance in most settings. The new recommendations caught some state officials and businesses by surprise and raised a host of difficult questions about how the guidelines would be carried out. But the advice does come as welcome news to many Americans who are weary of restrictions. Um, Dr. Walensky, the director of the CDC at a White House news conference on Thursday said, we've all longed for this moment. If you're fully vaccinated, you can start doing the things you've stopped doing because of the pandemic. However, vaccinated Americans would have to continue to abide by existing state, local, or tribal laws and regulations and follow local rules for businesses and workplaces. And at the time of the announcement, about two dozen states mandated masking in public. Um, so, you know, it's been, people have had a lot of questions about this. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things where there's the science and then there's the practicality around implementation. You know, there are a lot of people out there that still have not been vaccinated. So what is the, you know, implication there? So, you know, I think that the, the issue is that this, this guidance applies to fully vaccinated people. Um, and we know that a large part of the population still has not been fully vaccinated. So it really relies on um, people to understand the guidance and, and to, follow, um, to follow it. Um, so the CDC's advice does come with some caveats. Even vaccinated individuals must cover their faces and physically distance when going to doctors, hospitals, or long-term care facilities like nursing nursing homes and homeless shelter shelters. People must continue to mask up when traveling by bus, plane, train, or other modes of public transportation or while in transportation hubs like airports and bus stations and also well, when in prisons and jails. Um, the agency wasn't specific about masking in some settings, including schools, and Dr. Walensky said that those recommendations would be refined and coming out in the coming weeks. You know, it's interesting uh, how things uh, changed so quickly. Only a few weeks ago, there was, you know, concern that the CDC was being too conservative uh, <laughs> in some of, of what they were talking about. And now uh, it feels or maybe some people are confused by what might be, you know, seem abrupt uh, in terms of the shift. Can you talk about the science uh, behind the decision, and how physicians can help patients understand, you know, another change in the guidance? Uh, you're absolutely right. You know, for months we've been warning people that wearing masks and social distancing were necessary to control the pandemic. And now, you know, the question is what's changed? And I think the landscape has changed and we're getting more information. So from, from the landscape issue, Dr. Walensky said the new recommendations have resulted from a steep drop in coronavirus cases. Infections have declined by about a third in the last two weeks, and there's an increase in the availability of vaccines. Um, second, we have updated science. The new guidance is based on two key scientific findings. Vaccinated people rarely transmit the virus and the shots are effective against variants. Um, there's no doubt at this point that the vaccines are powerful. Um, on Friday, the CDC received results from another large study showing that the vaccines made by Pfizer and Moderna are 94% effective in preventing symptomatic illness in those who are fully vaccinated and 82% effective even in those partially vaccinated. Now those numbers aren't 100% and that's I think what people have to understand um, when, they're, um, when they're in the presence of people who are at increased risk or who are unvaccinated, um, but um, are, certainly, um, are certainly positive. Yeah, but nonetheless, I mean, I think the message here is the odds are, you know, they're very low for somebody who's fully vaccinated, uh, you know, to get the virus and and extremely unlikely from what the science is saying then to transmit the virus to others. You know, those are common misperceptions out there or even, you know, earlier guidance before the science was in any other uh, data or information to provide around that. 
Yeah, you know, mounting evidence indicates that people who are vaccinated are highly unlikely to catch or transmit the virus. The risk is definitely not zero, but it's clear that it's very low. You know, one of the lingering concerns among scientists has been that even a vaccinated person might carry the virus, perhaps briefly, without symptoms, and spread it to others. However, CDC research, including the new study I mentioned, has consistently found few infections among those who received the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. This study added to the many studies that preceded it was pivotal to the CDC changing its recommendations. You know, other recent studies confirm that people who are infected after vaccination carry too little virus to infect others. Um, we should mention most of the data have been gathered on the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Because the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was authorized later, there are fewer studies assessing its, its effectiveness. It's a very good vaccine and will likely save man, many lives. We just need more data. Uh, well, speaking of the data, you know, vaccinations, uh, uh, you know, as we've passed through, uh, I guess, the enthusiasts, uh, we call that the first group to get through, we're now into uh, somewhat more reluctant population or people experiencing asset access issues. You know, where are we with vaccination numbers and what's what's going on there? Yeah. So, you know, last week, as expected, the CDC recommended use of the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 12 to 15, opening eligibility to a whole new age group. And we're hoping to see an uptick because millions more Americans are now eligible. The CDC said on Sunday about 157.1 million people have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, including about 123 million people who have been fully vaccinated by either the Johnson & Johnson single dose vaccine or the two-dose series made by Pfizer and Moderna. Um, so that translates to more than 59% of adults have received at least one shot. When factoring in the age group under 18, slightly more than 40%, 47% of our total population has received at least one shot, and about 37% of the total population is fully vaccinated. Um, President Biden set a goal on May 4th of reaching 70% of adults by July 4th, and you know providers are now in administering about 1.89 million doses per day on average. Um, that is a decrease from a peak of 3.38 million on um, April 13th, but some, some of the numbers are trending higher as we bring in the 12 to 15 age group. That's good news. Um, you know, you mentioned the cases uh, are dropping. What do the numbers look like this week? Um, so the numbers this week, 32,994,769 um, cases and 586,470 deaths. Um, cases, hospitalizations, and deaths have been trending downward in the United States for weeks. About 37,000 cases are being identified each day, the fewest since September, and about 630 deaths are being announced daily, the lowest average since July. You know, some of the states with the worst early spring outbreaks have seen the most significant progress. Um, you know, it's good to see that cases are down about 70% in the last two weeks in New Jersey and down about 40% in Michigan and New York. So, you know, things are um, things are trending positive. It's funny because I keep, you know, I check every day the, the little uh, yeah. case uh, statistics uh, here in our local area of Chicago, and it still says it's very high. So I'm hoping I'll see that tick down uh, sometime soon as well. You know, uh, what are we seeing globally? Obviously, big uh, news continues. Uh, with terrible situations in, in countries like India. Um, you know, how are you viewing the global situation at this point? Well, you know, and you're absolutely right. I mean, it's it's tragic. Um, the pandemic is quickly splitting into the haves and have nots. Many wealthy cities are making dramatic progress showing COVID-19, slowing COVID-19 as they vaccinate more people. Cases have started to drop. However, you know, outbreaks are devastating India and much of South America, and there aren't nearly enough vaccines available to them. The Biden administration announced on Monday that the United States will send at least 20 million coronavirus vaccine doses in June to countries struggling against the pandemic. Now those 20 million doses of Pfizer and Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines would be in addition to the 60 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccine, which the US plans to donate once the vaccine is cleared for use by the Food and Drug Administration. It's not exactly clear how long it will take the FDA to authorize the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, you know, during a White House press conference on Monday, President Biden said, we know America will never be fully safe until the pandemic that's 
that's raging globally is under control. No oceans wide enough, no walls high enough to keep it high enough to keep us safe. Um, and so we really have to um, look at this as a global pandemic. Indeed. Well, thanks so much, uh, Dr. Irons, for being here today and sharing your perspectives. We'll see you next week for another update. In the meantime, for additional resources on COVID-19, visit ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for joining us today. Please take care. 